Hello, and welcome to this short informational session specifically for OMBA students regarding the Graduate Certificate in Business Analytics. My name is Terry Harrison. I'm the Faculty Director of Business Analytics, and I would certainly be happy to answer any questions you might have after viewing this. So let me tell you how we're going to spend the next few minutes. I'm going to break it up into three areas to talk about analytics in general, to give you some background uh, on its history and its current popularity. I also talk about the structure of our certificate and provide some additional details should you wish to continue on. And lastly, I'll finish with what kinds of students typically do well in our program. So what is analytics? Well, there are a number of definitions out there. There is no one crisp, singular definition that represents it. The one I like best is this one that is put out by the uh, world's leading analytics organization, Informs. And it is analytics is the scientific process of transforming data into insight for making better decisions. However, that's a bit vague. It's, it's general, and so often I'll also use this uh, definition that Tom Davenport and Jeannie Harris put forth uh, 10 years ago at the early beginnings of analytics, and that it's um, the use of data. Always it has data in it. Often statistical and, uh, to a lesser extent, quantitative analysis. And we're building a variety of different kinds of models to drive decisions, as they put here, and improve courses of action. Now, I also have uh, a definition here that I've put together that um, let me read it and then expand on it. So analytics is an agglomeration of techniques from statistics, computer science, information sciences, and operations research. Uh, it is uh, more than that, though, and I'll expand on that in a minute. And the applications for using analytics come especially from using very large data sets and the ability to do that. Now, why is analytics uh, so popular right now? Why is it the kind of uh, area that is highly recruited? We don't have enough folks to fill many of the job opportunities, and it seems to have come uh, upon the business scene or the management of organizations in general rather rapidly. Over the past 10 to 12 years, it, it has become popular in the press. And um, I'll answer that in a moment. Uh, there's a great article that provides this background in HBR, and it is titled, Data Scientist, the Sexiest Job of the 21st Century. Now. Um, How's analytics structured? How can you think about analytics in general? What, what are its components? How do I um, uh, go from end to end in analytics? And so uh, most folks adopt a rubric that says analytics is divided into three areas of practice. Descriptive analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. So let's talk about descriptive analytics first. Um, descriptive analytics typically answers the question, what happened? That is, we've got some data, and now we want to know what that data tells us about the past. And so using descriptive analytics techniques and visualization, some statistics, uh, you come up with a way of describing past um, performance, past behaviors, uh, patterns. You might even uh, make some predictions. Uh, in a very limited way, uh, but uh, it's really to get a snapshot of what has happened. Visualization plays a big role here. The next area of analytics, and the next in this progression, is predictive analytics. And unlike descriptive analytics, which answers the question, what did happen, predictive analytics answers the question, what will happen? This is really the sweet spot of analytics practice right now. And for many folks, analytics is predictive analytics. And it deals with um, estimating what will happen in the future via probabilistic estimates, statistical analysis. Um, primarily, you are doing forecasting to find uh, different ways to predict the future. Um, 
a lot of currently um, well-known techniques like machine learning, regression, and classification, a number of other techniques fall into predictive analytics. It also builds on models from descriptive analytics. And again, just like descriptive analytics, you have to have data to be able to do any work in this area. The final and perhaps uh, highest level of analytics practice is prescriptive analytics, which answers the question, what should happen? And it comes along after typically the first two areas where you obtain data, you prepare it, you get a snapshot of what's been happening, you develop models that uh, will tell you what you expect to happen, and using those two, you build then models to determine what's the best thing I ought to do? What's my best course of action given what I know from the data? It takes into account a lot of things. And um, the techniques here are very powerful. They can be very time consuming computing wise. And uh, as a result, um, it typically is an area that is practiced last after you've done the other areas. And it is not as widely used yet as uh, for instance, predictive analytics. Now, um, analytics is composed of techniques from statistics, computer science, operations research, mathematics, and other areas. Uh, and the fundamental methods of analysis that are used in analytics really come from these other areas. Uh, so what makes analytics different than just being all of those um, techniques in a mashup? And the answer is uh, very telling, and it also gives some insight as to why analytics has suddenly become uh, a rather indispensable area of the practice of business. First off, um, you can do things that you couldn't do before. Uh, coincident with the development of an analytics framework, uh, we've developed the ability to look at very large data sets in real time, to do things like detecting credit fraud in real time across data sets that exist all over the world, for example. In fact, the definition of big data is uh, the situation where you have data sets that are so large they cannot fit on a single computer and therefore must be distributed throughout many computers or a few computers and worked on in um, a different kind of fashion where traditionally we have data and a program on the same computer in big data, quote, we have a large data set that is broken into pieces, stored on multiple computers, and we send the program to those computers to operate on them, then aggregate the results. Now, there is a, um, an organization, Informs, which is one of the world's leading advanced analytics organizations that has come up with a what's called a job task analysis and it provides an, an insightful way to look at analytics from end to end. And it also highlights what makes analytics different than its simple collection of uh, techniques. And this uh, job task analysis, this end to end analytics process starts off with asking what is the business or organization problem that we're trying to address and framing that in a way that makes sense to see if in fact it uh, is a useful um, exercise in analytics. So once you frame that question you go to the second step and you then refine it in terms of analytics to see if in fact you can address this kind of problem using the techniques of analytics. Once you've done that problem framing in a way that is understandable not only to the analyst but also to the decision makers and the clients and the customers, then you proceed to uh, obtain data. It's a very uh, time consuming step. Usually it's the most time consuming step in all of these seven um, steps here. Uh, it's the long pole in the tent for uh, time and also for effort. Then in the fourth step, you decide what analytics techniques will be brought to bear to solve this. In fifth step, you actually build these models, 
test them, uh, use the data, and uh, get to the point where they're producing credible results. You go through a period of validation and verification. At that point, you then deploy it and then put it in a standard lifecycle management process. Now, let's switch to the um, program that we have here at Penn State in Business Analytics. This is entirely online, offered through World Campus. Our certificate in Business Analytics is three courses, nine credits. The first is Band 530, which corresponds to Descriptive Analytics. Uh, the second, Band 540, is a Marketing Analytics course with heavy emphasis on Predictive Analytics. And the third is Band 550, which is a prescriptive analytics course with a supply chain component to it. Band 540 and Band 550 are complementary in that one looks at supply side analytics and the other looks at demand side analytics. Collectively, these three courses taken in this sequence form the certificate in business analytics. Now you can also, if you choose, uh, use the nine credits in the Graduate Certificate in Business Analytics and continue on to the MPS in Data Analytics, the Masters, because all nine credits of the Certificate in Business Analytics uh, are used in the MPS. So what does it look like for a typical student coming in? Um, first off, you have to have some quantitative bent. You don't have to be uh, highly mathematical, but you have to have a, a clear uh, thinking about how you approach problems. You also need some statistics. There's no way around being an analytics person uh, without having statistics skills. If you like problem solving and the structure that that imposes, uh, working with organizations, different facets of the organization to go through that seven-step process in the end-to-end -end analytics approach. And of course, uh, like most, you can communicate clearly, then you are an ideal candidate for our certificate. And so with that, um, I welcome any questions you might have, and uh, please feel free to follow up with not only me, but also other folks in the OMBA program for how you might uh, pursue this certificate. Thank you.